So I've been working with honeybees for 40 years, and uh, this has been my main line of work my entire career. Um, they say that in biology, one comes to one's study systems uh, two different ways. Uh, one way is to fall in love with a question, scientific question or a set of questions, and then look for the best study system to be able to address that question. Um, a minority of biologists fall in love with an organism and then try to figure out what that organism is good for. And I'm in that latter category. I fell in love with honeybees when I was a young man and was just captivated, smitten by them, by their social order. And um, as I decided to become a biologist, the task was to try to figure out what are they good for in biology? What questions can they be used to answer? And it wasn't hard to figure out um, what others also had figured out um, that honeybees are great study organisms to understand how societies work. And in particular, the relationship between individual society members and the society as a whole. Because it's possible with honeybees to be able to manipulate the societies in ways that are just unimaginable um, in, in other organisms that live in complex societies, certainly ourselves, but even other animals. Social insects provide an economy of scale um, that allow us to do replicated, highly replicated experiments under natural conditions to be able to study the biology of social behavior at different levels of analysis. So that is, we're interested in understanding how a colony interacts in the environment, responds to changing conditions, changes what it does. We're interested in understanding how individual behavior gives rise to a changing colony. And then we can go inside the individual and understand its brain, study its brain, study its neurons, study the genes inside the brain, and then think about sort of a Russian dolls model, a nested model, to be able to look at these different levels of understanding from the gene all the way to the society and in between in a system that allows for intense manipulation and replication. And so it's that uh, system that uh, my laboratory has developed, some of the tools to be able to go across these integrative levels to allow us to address these questions with the honeybee. I'm very interested in collaborating uh, to be able to extend the paradigm and, and use these discoveries from honeybees to, to understand things in a broader context. Uh, I have been working with social scientists in the realms of psychology and sociology in particular. Uh, so in the context of psychology, um, some work on personality development that's led by Brent Roberts, uh, who is a psych developmental psychologist, and we're, we're working together to explore how um, the sociogenomics framework, which allows for this flexibility, this dynamic genome, how that fits in in understanding the malleability of, of personality. With Ruby Mendenhall, a sociologist who studies stress and resilience in single moms in South Chicago, we're interested, in, again, in extending the paradigm and focusing it particularly on the notion of biological embedding, the term given to the idea that the environment somehow gets under the skin and then affects health and wellness in, um, in humans. And so this concept of biological embedding, which is really just a different way of talking about environmental influences on, on the genome, we're interested in understanding how you put those two together. How can we understand biological embedding in molecular terms? And so we work together um, in, in that context to be able to explore those, those questions.